it's Matthew, just up here in the Blue Mountains. I'm hanging out with my friend Baru, aka Judge Abel, and we're doing a little walk around the community here and looking at some medicinal, useful, edible herbs and plants that are just growing around the community here. So you might recognize Baru from our Blue Mountain hike that we did. That's the far eye. And the music video that we did. Yes, so. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Excited to be back. Give thanks. Yeah, yeah, man. Yes, I. Good day, man. Yeah, so we're walking through. Just gonna start all the thing right away as we reach here. We see this is a passion fruit. Wow. See, it's a passion fruit tree. Almost every plant here in the Blue Mountain. We're just walking through at random, randomly pointing out anything that we know that we use as medicine or for food. Perfect. Yeah, so this one, this medicine is, is both fruit, it gives fruit, and it's also a medicine. The blossom, that's the, 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 the petals, we use that for our medicine also, yeah, it's good for to lower blood pressure. So when a person's blood pressure is high, we recommend some passion flowers for them. Yeah. That's and a new one for me. See? I love the passion yeah. fruit. Yeah. <laughs> called other places or in Brazil they call it maracuja. Ah. Avocado tree. And it's pear in season. In Jamaica right? we call it pear. Yeah. yeah, and it's the season for it now. This one this tree is young, so we're not gonna see any fruit on it now. But there are other trees that have a lot of fruit now because it's pure season now. The leaves of this plant, we use this so also for blood pressure and it's also used in, for asthma. So a person that has shorter breath asthma, we could boil the leaves and give to them and that will ease the pressure. We, we combine it with other things. Maybe when we're going up, we'll see other plants that are sure that we combine this with to lower blood pressure also. Nice. Yeah, so it's both good for eating and the leaves good for medicine. And I remember it's one of your favorite breakfasts because you uh, said you uh, like the, the bull and the pear, right? Wow, wow, wow. I just had some this morning, brother. <laughs> yeah. We've been walking 30 seconds and we've already got tons of plants. Yeah. See, banana tree right there. Yeah. We know the banana. Fruit good for eating both green and ripe. Yeah. And we also use the uh, leaves when they are dried. We boil it together with other things too. Good for your strengthening of your back and all of that. Yeah. And that little red thing that you see come down on. Little flower, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We just chop that up, boil it down to like a cup and give it to drink. It's a little bitter, steamy, but yeah. it's good for the back. So it's a good amount of steps getting up to the community here. And your place is even higher, yeah? Yeah, we up up. Nice. So yeah, incredible views. You can see Kingston just beyond the flag there. You're supposed to know this plant, the hibiscus. Yeah. Yes. People, it looks like it's just a normal plant, but it has uses also. Yeah. The leaves of the plant, it makes a soap, soap like a shampoo. Mm -hmm. Can you make a shampoo from that? No way. Yeah, because it gets sooty. So this gives flour, good for a tea. It's good for, like. yeah, it's good for tea and it's good for make juice. You can actually blend this with ginger. Nice. And make a nice juice, a nice drink. Yeah, with hibiscus flowers. Yeah. Run all around. Hibiscus all around. Because we use them there, the, the roots of it hold up the land properly. So if you plant it at places like where you have a landslide, Ah. And it will just keep the place up, you know. So that's why you see plants all around the place to hold up the land. Very smart, because yeah, you can see the roots all, all over, yeah. growing, so it can grow on some pretty, pretty rough terrain yeah. quite easily. And they are very easy to catch. You like you do like this? If you cut like this right now, just take a stick at like this anytime and just stick it in. No way. <laughs> that won't die, brother. <laughs> Gone again. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, easy. So those decorations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No decoration. This is the gungu. You know gungu? Gungu pea, yeah. Yeah, gungu pea. Yeah. So you know when you beer the peas, the peas is good for cooking rice and peas, uh -huh. soup, olive, anything that you want to do with the peas. But the leaves also, people don't know that it's important too. The leaves, if you have a sore throat, you could actually just pick some of these leaves. Put, it in, put some hot water in it and when the hot water pulls out what it has, the medicine that it has, you use that water to gargle your throat mm. and the sore throat is gone. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. I was always surprised with the gungo peas growing on a tree. Because yeah. when I think of beans, I think of a stalk or a uh, kind of vine. Oh, no, so but we have... see them on a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big tree, and it's very... This tree can withstand any weather, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, so we call it a hard time plant. Because yeah. so you can manage the dry, you can manage it, just keep on going. Nice. Yeah. This is what we're passing right now, this leaf, this little leaf, and these. In Jamaica, we call this the kwaku bush. Yeah, we call it kwaku bush. This can be used, make a poultice from it. Yeah. If you have a skin rash, huh. or something bit you on the skin, or something that's swelling, you rub this kwaku bush on it, and that will ease the pain, ease the swelling, and all of that. Very good. You can use it like for even people use it for even skin, other skill ailments. Yeah? And you. Wash, wash the body down with it, and it helps. I gotta try some. I get some like dry. I don't know what they call it, eczema or whatever that yeah, doesn't go away. And the doctor's always trying to give me some steroid that never works. Yeah, it works for a couple days and then oh, it comes man. back. Use so this on it, man. I gotta try some here. Like it's not. I don't have it so bad that it's like itching, but it, you can see it's dry, kind of scaly, yeah, yeah, yeah. just a couple spots. Yeah, man. You do this on it for a few days, man. Or All right. A couple, few times. Cool. And you'll see the difference, you know? Let's try it. Quaka. Quaka bush. How do you spell it? C U A C O. Okay. Quaka. Very cool. Feels nice too. All so right. Probably that's not the scientific name because you, you know in Jamaica we have our names. Yeah, for yeah. The, yeah, so you know. I want to know the local names anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Bless up. Oh, we got some French time? Yeah, man. Beautiful. So we're getting even higher. Hi, hi. See a bunch of Spanish needles. Spanish needle. Spanish needle. It look like just a bush. And like it's not worth anything. But I tell you, this is one of main medicines that can cure diabetes. Ah. Which is a worldwide problem right now. Diabetes is a worldwide problem, we know that. Yeah. And this, this plant here, can solve diabetes problems. Cool. Yeah, you just got to know which plant or the plant to combine it with. And it's, it's just, this has done it before. We have done it, used it to cure other people before. The same yeah. Spanish needle. I think there's a poem about it too. Yeah. Yeah, usually there's a poem that we usually have in school. I don't remember it to the fullness, but I know it usually say like, I remember the part that says dainty Spanish needles, like oh dainty Spanish needle, how you were saying some other good things about the Spanish needle, but at that time I didn't know. We just used to say the poem without meaning, you know. Uh -huh. I didn't know that it was so important as a medicine for true. Because look at the world now, diabetic people are all over. And this is a medicine for diabetes. So it looks like it's just growing natural on its own, yeah. Natural. Like it wasn't planted there, it just no, showed up. No, it just grows. No one planted. No one plants Spanish needle burger. It goes wild, you know? Yeah. How long is pear season? It only lasts for a few months, you know. Uh -huh. Start eating pear like in July. And by October, pear gone. Mm. Yeah. That's Start it. like in the late part of July. By the end of September. Look, you start to appear and disappear. <laughs> you appear, just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this plant, you're supposed to know this flower. It's, uh, they call this flower up, periwinkle. Very pretty one. Yeah. So, this plant is lower blood pressure and it's also good for swellings. So, if you should get some like a hinge and get swell up, uh -huh. your skin gets swollen. This plant is good for a swelling. Yes. Take the swelling down. It's very winkle. Good old French time. Yeah. We have a lot of it up here. Absolutely. Yeah, Moko uses this quite a bit. He grows some in his farm too. He'll use the regular time and the French time and you get such a nice flavor in the food when you use both of them. Yes. But it looks completely different than the other time. It's a very thick leaf and kind of furry almost. Sure. Fuzzy. Yeah. 
Yeah, because sometimes the, the, the older leaves them might look have the fur look like all this. Yeah. yeah man, this is also a very good medicine in Jamaica. We use it for all type of inflammation of the stomach and we use it for colds. We use it for mucus congestion to get rid of mucus out of the system. All the phlegm, anything that consists with coughing, it's a good combined with honey. Uh -huh. Yeah, it works like a cough syrup too. Yeah, it's interesting how there's a lot of plants that work with this specific combination, right? Like yes. one element brings out another yeah, element. Out yeah, yeah, and you have one plant, you can have one plant that have like 20 different uses. You combine it with another plant that has another use that it has, and another plant that has another use that it has. So you combine like, like three or so plants with the same that does the same thing and you actually make a medicine now for one thing yeah, yeah. so you have plants that have many multiple purposes there's more yeah yeah, yeah you touch it for one second and it, it the scent comes off right away True. Ooh, it smells nice strong yeah all up here i'm gonna just step over here okay if you can see the usual camera to see this plant i'm gonna take off two leaves of it yeah yeah, because I'm trespassing right now. Okay. <laughs> 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 what is my first, my brother's place, though, no problem, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Promise someone some of these leaves to start taking off a few leaves to give to someone. This plant here, brother, it's rare, even. In Jamaica, right now, even on the mountain, you might only find it here and another place up there. Not many, not many people have this plant, but this plant, brother, I tell you, this is a miracle worker. This here plant is a miracle worker. And I can tell you this one from experience, personal experience. This plant is called the comfrey. Looking it up, you might see the name Comfrey with spell C O M F R E Y. Looking it up on the internet, you might see another name Knitback K N I T B A C K. I like that name for it, Knitback. You know why I like that name so much? It's really Knitback things, brother. Anything that is broken or sprained, <laughs> this plant knit it back. I can oh. tell you that. I use this to heal my son' broken leg. No way. I tell you. I, I didn't know the leg was broken at first because he was young. It was like swollen and getting, like he injured it and it was swollen. And I used this plant, crush it up because the leaf of it, what you do, you would crush it, crush it, crush it, crush it up until it becomes a poultice. Make it into a poultice, very soft, and then you would just tie it onto the, the place where the person got the injury. Yeah? yeah? I did that for like about three days because we are so high in the mountain, you know, to get down to the doctor and all that. So I did this for about three days before I took him to the doctor. When I did the x-ray and brought it back to the doctor, the doctor said, um, how long has this leg been broken or injured or because it's broke? You know, because the x-ray showed that it was broken. But it was. Yeah, it was broken. Mm -hmm. But he said, how long? I said, it's three days. And he said, no, couldn't be three days. <laughs> And I'm saying, yes, it's been three days because I was watching it. I didn't know it was broken, so I was watching it far. And he said, this leg looks like it has been like healing for three weeks already. And I'm like, what? I'm like, well, this leg was broken for three days. The doctor said to me, okay, this leg is healing and I don't know what, so I'm going to have to just send you back home with it and give you a date and you come back like in five, six days' time and you give me an next appointment, right? I come back home, I do the same thing keep on using this comfrey when I go back after that six days appointment sent me to do another x-ray when he did the x-ray and the x-ray came back the leg was almost almost fully healed wow. his doctor said to me the, 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 the leg is healing and it's healing already so I don't, if it don't heal the right way how it's supposed to heal I'm gonna we're gonna have to break it yeah. back and probably put an iron in his foot and this youth will never, like he said, this youth with this leg will never do any sports. He will never run again. He will never, that's what he was saying to me. Anyway, he still sent me back because he can't do nothing. So he sent me back home and gave me another appointment. 
I went back after seven days again appointment. He's still checking the leg and see that the leg is all is just is almost is like it's fixed now, healed. But he still wanna give me another appointment because he can't believe. After the next appointment I didn't go back. And right now, I can show you that son when he's coming down, maybe he's eighteen years old now, going to nineteen. And he's one of the most active youth on this mountain. Up and down the hill plenty times and all over the place on those feet. That same leg that was broken that the doctor said he would have to break back and put iron in it and all of this. It was all done by this. No doctor, no doctor did anything at all to that leg, brother. <laughs> only thing he went to do, only thing the doctor did is look at a piece of paper, the x-ray in front of him. He didn't, knock, he didn't touch that foot. And that leg is like, you can't notice any difference. Sometimes when a person hand break, and you bring it to the doctor after a time you see a difference like you can notice that something doesn't have like, the flexibility doesn't have the motion well that yeah. that foot you can't tell no difference because you don't move any way different on any of them you just run off this place right now past you like Usain Bolt brother so. yeah <laughs> so this is the miracle plant that did it no but Comfrey. you said it's kind of rare too it yeah it's kind of rare grow easily or it, what? It, people it only grows in garden it don't grow wild uh -huh. like how we have the Spanish needle and the rest of things mm -hmm. that grows wild you have to actually plant this I see yeah, and somebody would have to give you a plant of it. And the root of it is for a different reason completely, altogether from what this does. Because this does this in externally, you know. You can drink the root of it now. Internally, it does something different inside of you, brother. Something people, oh, this plant, brother. <laughs> Just look it up. That's, yeah, all, that's, the, that's the only thing I can tell you. This Just one I've never heard up. of. I've Just, heard of Spanish needle. I heard of French thyme. Yeah. I heard of Pierre. But this is a Just look it up. This is one of the main ones that I come up this reason why I come up this year. Wow. You see, this is one of the main reasons why I bring you up this side. This plant is one of the main reasons why I bring you up here that you could see this miracle here, brother. Actually, these leaves that I pick right now, later on in the evening, I'm taking them down to Kingston. For one of my next raster bridging was a sprained foot and he wants to get the swelling down and everything because this takes the swelling down fast you know if you have a swelling and something injured and when you tie this on it the swelling goes quick quick the swelling mm -hmm. gone and it started healing right away so they that's, that's why they call it knit back yeah because anything i met another bridging he's a raster man now too he came here like about 10 years ago and i never forget that man came up here with a stick walking with a, a, a little stick and thing but when he told me his story I was telling him about the country and when he told me his story the man said I can't tell you my story about the country the man told me that he had about four broken his legs were broken in about four different places yes. both of them and they write him off I mean he was in a wheelchair they write him off doctors wrote him off that he would never walk again and, and someone introduced him to this plant a virgin of, of his had it in his, his garden and introduce him to it and give it to him and start giving leaves and tell him what to do. The man walk, he's walk, he walk him up here, he walk with a stick, but he walk mm -hmm. up these steps right here up to the tabernacle and told me about this miracle plan too that helped him to. And that's not no a doctor. few amount of steps if you can see where that's we are. A whole lot of steps from down there to come up yeah. here. You're walking like a mile just from the hill foot to yeah. come up. And straight up too. It's not, uh, a, it's not an easy. And easy that regime come up and he walked back down easily to walk. He didn't have any, he just walked with a stick to make sure that he has his balance. Yeah. But he's walking and now he, he threw away the stick a long time. That man is running up and down on foot right now. And his feet all over the place. I tell you. Cool. <laughs> this plant. That's a new one. Yeah, all right. Plus, uh, I had to give this one its full glory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one deserves some extra time. Yeah. <laughs> Certain plants need a little more love. Deserve some more spotlight. You know the papaya. Yeah, there was a. I was just going to point out the young papaya that was growing right beside there that we were. Yeah. We were. This is a really easy one to tell because there's no other tree that looks looks like that. And yeah. Oh, okay. I see tree, coconut tree. Yeah. The oh. only only coconut tree in the in the mountain. Yeah. Really. Yep. They don't grow up so high very well? No, they don't do well in the cold. Mm -hmm. And they don't, it still don't bear any, we still don't get any fruit off it yet, but at least it's there. Yeah, you know? maybe one day, you never maybe know. Maybe one day, yeah. Maybe we'll get some fruit. a slow fruits. bloomer. Yeah. So yeah, we got that one here. And then Aki, which we had a nice Aki salt fish dish for breakfast. Aki leaf is a pretty easy one to tell. 
Well, you'll see the orange. The fruits, if that's the easy way, right? Jewel. Very easy. And as we've talked about before, just don't eat the non open ones. No. Ever. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. Never you try to force it open. You don't take, the, the, the aki don't take bud up. No. You can't bud up aki. Aki will bud you up. Yeah, you can't force aki like, okay, come here, aki. Yeah. I'm going to eat you now and cut you open. No, you, it will kill you. Patience. You got to be patient and wait on that aki, aki until it's open itself before you eat. You can't bud up aki. Remember. Is this more French thyme here? Yep. Wow, that's a huge bush of French thyme. And look at the flower on it. It's going to seed all over the place. So it's going to spread more. Yeah. Each time you see it drop, it just spread. I know that's tuna. Oh, yeah, we the tuna. The so this one's good for washing your hair. Yep. So, yeah, this is a this one's an interesting one because who'd have thought a cactus would be good for washing your hair? And this is another papaya. Yeah. And let me tell you the other thing that the cactus is good for, the tuna. Internally now. Some people only know it of washing here because they see it like making shampoo and all of that. Yeah. But you see that same plant, the leaf of it, you wash it properly, cut it up in dices, put it in a glass or a cup or a, anything you want to put it in, pour some nice spring water on it, let it stay for like any time after 10-15 minutes, it starts soaking up. And you drink that water, that water going to be heavy, thick. Mm. And heavy. That good for the knees. I need People some of that cheap. lately, man. Ah. <laughs> I've been mashing up my knees skateboarding and uh, yeah, so been having to go to physio and getting older. I'm like, oh, am I falling apart? Maybe I just need some tuna water. Yeah, you just gotta start drinking those, and it also makes other things heavy. You know, mm -hmm. it's heavy up certain things. If people would say like uh, your balls get heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are pretty heavy already. I don't want to uh, overdo it. Power in the punch, yeah, power in the punch. Power in a reptile. <laughs> <laughs> I you know over there, you have pineapple trees and you have the sour sap. Yeah, I, yeah. I love the small. sour sap. I didn't recognize it because it's so small. So oh, no way. This is a little fruit. Deep in all the first Just time a tiny one. First fruit that's pushing out on the sour sap tree. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah sour sap's one of my favorites. Good when tea. You, yeah, make tea good for the nerves. Keep your nerves calm and you know. They've done some some research on the sour sap as well, and I believe it. They did find it has anti -car anti cancer True. Yes, elements yes, like yes, anti carcinogens. Yes. I don't know the exact research yeah, that man, you have, on it, but because you have some plants up here that's good, we have cancer plants up yeah. here. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. I'll have to put a link to that below because I'm no expert as usual, but uh, I'm going to watch your step here too. You know, Is this a little cocoa here, bro? Yeah, cocoa. I always recognize the cocoa with a spade leaf. Yeah, nice food, man. Yeah, beautiful one. Good food. I'm getting higher, higher, higher. Look at that. <laughs> man, we are way up there now. What's this purple one? That looks really crazy. That's a floor. Ah. Just looks nice. That's a crazy color, purple and green. Beautiful one. All right, you see, police maca. This is when it's young. It's getting older now. Even this plant smaller, because it's getting older. This plant is the police maca. Uh -huh. See how a little blossom, show them the blossom here. So they can recognize it when they see it. Yeah. Is it called the maca because it gets thorns on it? Polish maca, yeah, it has some when it, when it gets it, it's, oh. oh, it gets thick, like yeah. it's one of thick, you know? Because maca is what they call a thorn here in Jamaica, yeah? Yeah. Because like, they call the spine, maca, yeah. The sea urchin spine maca, or there's a tree maca. that has the maca. Yeah, man, it's maca, yeah, that means that it will get juke. It's a maca, yeah. will juke you. Yeah, like it's stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this one now is good for kidney disease. Okay. People that have kidney disease, this plant is good for you to drink as a tea. Yeah, it helps the kidney. I see some banana there, young banana. Yeah, that's young planting. Planting, oh yeah, because yeah. the, the dark, the yeah. dark part on the bottom. You remember that, you remember yeah. that, the, 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 the banana carried the dark yeah. chunk on it, yeah. For some reason, even after all these years coming here, I still mistake banana and planting. Yeah, because it's, it's not easy to, to, you know, because you have some bananas that actually carry that kind of color too. I think that's why up. I get confused. Yeah, yeah, you have some banana, but not, it's just not much, you know. 
mostly we'll see the planting have that look. But you still have some banana, a breed of banana that carry that look too. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, so I can be forgiven for that one. Yeah, but you see, Bible saying by the fruits you shall know them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I got some more studying to do then. <laughs> if no fruit is on it, it's hard for you to tell, you know? Yeah, yeah. But when the fruit is on it, you can't mistake again because you're going to say, oh, that's banana. Okay, mm -hmm. that's planting because you see the fruit. So you see everywhere you go? Pear land. Pear. Pear, pear, pear. Corn. Or maize. Maybe you might know it as maize. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Well, you know in Jamaica we say corn. So this is a corn. These are young. These are what you put them in. Oh, yeah. And these kind of go through the dry, hard, dry weather so they didn't get big. Yeah? Yeah. So the corn is good for eating. But this now. Because you already know the corn is good for eating and you know how to eat corn. But probably you never know about this part of the corn. No. Okay, they call this the corn silk. And this is, corn silk is very good for brain nerves. So you have people that are going through some anxiety problem, depression and all of that. Still a matter of the brain nerves. This, huh. making this into a tea, is very good for that person. It's also good for hernia. You ever heard of hernia? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good for hernia also. Wow. Yeah, so this corn silk here, simple as a city silk thing, is very important. It's a medicine. The corn is good for eating, and the silk is a medicine. I did not know that, and we grow a lot of corn in Canada. So See? Uh, learn something every day. It's even good for the kidney too, and the bladder. So for people who have bladder problems, problems urinating and all of that, because of the bladder, this is good for it too, kidney and bladder, also good. Fantastic, yeah. This other plant right now that is growing, this plant, when I was a youth, when I was a child, they usually tell me that they put this, these seeds, the seeds that grow on this, when they get dry, they put them in like bun. Uh -huh. Like we're baking a bun, they usually put these seeds in it. If you... It almost looks like a mustard, mustard seed. Too. Yeah. Yeah, they call it fennel. Oh yeah. Fennel, you heard of it? Yes. Okay, yeah. smell it. It almost smells like a black licorice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh yeah, yeah, fennel seeds for sure. Yeah. The seeds of it, they use it for baking, as I said before, they usually use, I don't know if they see they use this again for baking. But now, the leaves that you just smell there, a lady that is pregnant, I'm gonna give like a, a infant suck. This builds up breast milk. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's another new yeah. one for me. <laughs> yeah man. This make the breast milk get plenty. You should know I have I get a yellow youth so I, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. This this make the breast milk get plenty, you know? And this also gives female because I've given leave the females this herb are ready to drink like on the road like we're selling roots and thing and when they drink it they were like what do you have in this that let me feel so sexy you know i'm feeling like <laughs> nice and yeah you know? i said this because this plant also makes a woman feel her feminine femininity more and feels more sexy in herself like you know yeah it gives a feeling like so so women would who don't really feel that kind of way, you know, okay, I have some ladies that say, oh, they never feel for sex and they're like, start drinking this plant and it will get you a sexy, sexy feeling. Good to know. Fennel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not only for that either, you have it, it's good for arthritis, inflammation of your stomach, cough too, if you're having a cough, mm -hmm. that same fennel is good for that too. Yeah. Take your time here, brother. Yep. I'm gonna watch my step here. The corn rose. Here we go. We are getting yeah. up here now. Can you tell? We're getting a little higher. Higher, and higher. higher heights. All right, so you know we have the castor. Mm -hmm. Good old castor. That's the tree. These are the seeds. This is what the oil come from. This is what everybody's getting crazy about. Mm -hmm. These two little things that you see here. When you go inside, 
when it breaks open yeah you get the little nut you get the little nut in there and this is it this is what this little thing here that's what makes the oil okay just that little thing there alone makes the oil the oil so, is in that i hear it, it's used for hair skin but also if people are feeling sick to their stomach as well i hear it's also people good for it. if you have a constipation ah uh, yeah yeah you take a little of that and the boys surely will move yeah but it's a good for, for here it's perfect to make hair growth strengthen your hair keep your hair black make your hair thick mm -hmm. all of these things it does to the hair yeah it's a very cool very looking plant but for any tree that i'm dealing with i just don't only deal with the fruits because i always know that there's something else about that tree so some people just go for the pear and the pear tree or go for the passion and the passion tree but I'll go further than that. I'll go say, oh, the fruit is there. What about the leaves? Yeah, what can the leaves do? What, you know? Mm -hmm. So this, no, the leaves are this. People will never, you, maybe you go all over, you'll never hear anyone talk about the leaves. They only talk about the seeds of this. But this leaf, this is what I would use if I don't have this. Uh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, if the plant or the fruit is useful in the nut, why not the, the leaf is useful too. Not the leaf. So this is what I would use if I don't have comfrey. If I don't have any comfrey and someone gets injured like a pain, like hand injury or anything like that and I don't have any comfrey, I would boil this in the water first, keep a little salt in it. Mm. And it when it's warm enough, the person would use that to bathe off the, 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 the section of the hand that's swollen or whatsoever happened there. Then beat this up into a poultice, just like all the beads of the comfrey, and put this on, on it and you get results. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's, not, it's not as fast or as powerful as the comfrey, but it's second in, in charge. And this is a really crazy looking, looking nut. Yeah. This spikiness and uh, yeah, the leaf is such a specific leaf, so it's very, very easy to tell. Yeah. This almost looks like a zucchini flower, this one. Well, that's pumpkin, you know? Oh, it's a pumpkin. Yeah, okay, a pumpkin. yeah, pumpkin, zucchini. Uh, cucumber all have a kind of similar flower, so yeah, yeah. So that's the classic Jamaican pumpkin, the uh, the green one but orange inside. Okay. You know the guava? Yeah. Guava tree, yeah. It's a guava tree. There's no guava on it now. Yeah, young guava on it, like young. Just coming in. Nice guava. The leaf almost looks like soursop leaf, yeah. kind of. That's a pretty... These trees get way bigger though, right? Like this guava yeah, tree, yeah, it yeah. goes huge. It's interesting how they can bear even when they're so young. Yeah, so this now, remember I told her about the Spanish needle down there? Yeah. And I told her that if you combine the Spanish needle with other plant, with another plant for diabetes, this is also one of the plants that you would combine when you're making a diabetes medicine. Mm -hmm. Guava leaf. It's also good for diarrhea. It's also good for high blood pressure, to bring down that high blood pressure, yeah? And it's also good in, the, in a medicine for a cancer. Now the cancer medicine now will be made with another thing, but guava leaf would also enter into that medicine with okay. cancer, for cancer. So you see guava leaf right away is about five, four or five uses I give you for guava leaf right away. When you got more... The bees growing right below, more castor all over. I have to be pulling them out, brother. Because it grows so they easy. Pop, they pop when they dry. They just pop open and yeah. fall on the ground and they, you see all of them just growing it's up like over. crazy. Is that cane right behind it too? No, that's grass. Oh, that's just grass? It looks yeah, almost like grass. a sugar cane. That grass is also, that's, that's, that's grass. The dogs, if you let the dog go right now, the dog would eat some of that grass leaf, yeah, yeah. that type of grass. The, the dogs would eat that. So it's also a medicine for cleaning out the system. When the dog eat that, maybe you see like a vomit up back and some other things come out. They know that as a medicine because they are around before us, you know. Mm -hmm. Dogs and other animals are around before us, so they know the medicine more than us. So if you let them go right now, they will go and find medicine that and eat. So we realize from then that this grass is also good. When I study and do a little research on it, I find out that it's good for cleaning out the system, this grass. So that's why the dogs eat it. Mm. Yeah. They did their own medicine, they don't have to go to the doctor. If you let the dog go, he could find his own medicine. So I don't have to go to the vet. Even animals know how to treat themselves. Yeah, they know how to treat themselves yeah, with herbs. Wild. With herbs. Yeah. Only human beings acting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, because the chickens, if you, let, if you let go the chickens, the chickens go and pick herbs too. They know the herbs that to pick too. Yeah. The goat, the cow, all of them know. It's internal, right? I mean, and I'm sure we humans have it too, but it's kind of been lost. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were taken away from us for a long time, so it's like, it's all right getting it back, you know? Yeah. Okay, this now. Okay. Yeah, take a good look at it. We call it the burdock. Mm. Yeah, and that's one of my, this is one of my main, 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 main medicine, the root of it. When I'm gonna make a prostate cancer medicine. Mm -hmm. Very good for prostate cancer. Burdock. When you go and check it out, cause all that I tell you now, you know. You can just when you go and Google and check them out for yourself. Yeah, yeah. You might see something that interests you. Maybe I might tell you something more or they right. might tell you something bless more. Up, bless up. Yeah, bless up. True. Yes, yes, brother. I might give you a use that they don't give you. I they might give you a use that I didn't give you. Uh -huh. But they are, ah, give thanks, you know. Yes. Rastafari, right, bless, you know. See, I just got my Sabbath herbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for my nice. brother there. I have fire, you know. Give thanks. That's, yeah. We call it sour orange. Okay. Yeah. Because in the, in the orange tree field, you have a lot of different things. You have the orange, you have lime, you have lemon, you have grapefruit. Yeah. I you have, this, this now we call this a sour orange. So this, this sour orange, this is an interesting one because I've actually read a lot about oranges and all the oranges that they grow in Florida, yeah. they actually grow them on the sour orange ah. stock. So they actually graft onto these because yeah. it's a way more hardy tree. So they graft it and then the, they grow the different types of sweeter oranges on a, it's either a, le, a sour orange or sour lemon stock just for a better um, better, stronger tree. Someone had told me about a year ago the real reason why it had to be done that way. They said there is a worm ah. that eats the sweet orange tree root when it's young. So if you drop the sweet orange seed and you plant the sweet orange seed and it's coming up, they have there's an insect that eats the root of it, mm. eats it out all the time. So you're hardly gonna, you may plant like 12 of these and you never see one come and you wonder why, why, what happened? Because they, they grow up and then they die. So they know that something is eating out the root from under there. Yeah. So what they find out now, the scientists realize, okay, the worms love this sweet orange too much and they're eating out the root. So what you're going to do is plant the bitter one and the sour one from the plant, which they're not going to eat because they don't like the sour orange and they don't like the bitter one. So when they go now, they just engraft the sweet one onto it. So that make the worm don't have nothing to eat is that yeah. he, when you go there you see bitter root but sweet oranges on the top and that's the crazy thing with citrus <laughs> you can put any citrus and graft it on you can and, make yeah you can make an orange tree with lemon with lemon and yeah, grapefruit yeah can be, one one tree can be going like four different things yeah it's so cool yeah <laughs> fruit salad tree yeah man so that's the is this more gunga pea here yeah so you can see see some of the peas going more hibiscus. I'm starting to get the eye for everything. Yeah. to find some aloes, but not to know when you have aloes. But you're supposed to know aloes. That's good also when, we, when I'm making the cancer medicine. That's one of the, the same like this, the burdock that I just show you mm -hmm. for going to prostate cancer. The aloe is very important for that too. The aloe have so many uses, brother. If you got a burn right now, first thing you would try to get is a piece of aloe mm -hmm. to rub on it. And that will stop the average and stop the, 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 the thing from, that will cool it down and everything. And also stop it from getting, you know, swelling up and yeah. bubbly. Yeah, that will just keep it down. So although it has so many uses. You can be using it here too, to wash it here too. Yeah. We we'll also use it in a cleaning out medicine to clean out the system. So we're passing something here. This plant here, how do I see it? I think I see it. This is a red raspberry. Hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's red raspberry this. The fruit, I don't see any fruit on the tree right now. There's a tree right here. This is a tree. Mm -hmm. I don't see it on it right now. Well, you know when the fruit gets right there, red and pretty. And the fruit is good for eating for the plant. 
also very good especially for a female that is pregnant you drink this before you go into labor like you, find, you drink this as soon as you find out that she's pregnant like three months pregnancy she can drink this right up until the time of labor and this ease the labor pain that she would feel it also helps with the back pain that women would also feel with pregnancy because through the belly is getting big now the back kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. so they will feel back pain that also ease that pain the leaves of that tree ease all yeah so we we'll always keep it around so you know this is a place of babies <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. this is arrowroot oh yeah ah. you know yeah arrowroot we got arrowroot uh biscuits as kids yeah and i didn't know it came from a from a plant like i just this. never thought about yeah, it yeah it's a root man when you what pull it? it up you see the arrowroot underneath it's a right famous, now these have famous biscuit for kids right now these have been arrowroot wow Ah, yo! No yeah. way! <laughs> so that's what it looks so like. It's not, even, it's not even ready yet because it's, this is still young. Uh -huh. I just pulled this off one that you could see. Uh -huh. I yeah. never knew, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. This is the root, man, of the root, man. This is what they use. They can make a nice porridge with this too. It makes a starch. It's a starch, you know, so you can get it like a flour. Like yeah. you just have it stored like dry flour. After you make it into the starch, you just uh -huh. keep it dried. And you have it to use in whatsoever you're going to do. It's a good for starch. It's good for making a, a nice little porridge cereal. Yeah, yeah. Would straighten you up. Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, there's plenty plenty to go around. Hey, I see Susumba. Yeah. That's Susumba right there. Yeah, I Sumba. Susumba. I know that one. I Sumba. A bitter one, but yeah. a good one to, for the soup. Good one for the soup. Yeah, it's another easy one for me to recognize because Moko uses this one all the time. He's got one right on his yard, so. Cool. Nice. Yeah, man, it's good for the soup and the vegetables. The younger ones, them better because the older they get, they get bitter. You know, people yeah, don't like bitter yeah. taste when they're eating mm. or drinking something. But what I usually do, if I'm going to cook soup, no, I don't eat it either. I don't want to heat the fruit of it if it's too bitter either. So what I do, I put it in the soup and let it boil out in the soup. Then I just drink the soup without having to eat this. Uh -huh. yeah, so Take I get in all. Get the flavor without the yeah, little without thing. Yeah, true enough. That. I'll be right on the block. Oh, look at this pear here. Yeah. Now, it kind of makes sense in Jamaica why they, they call it a pear. It very much Shaped looks like, like a pear. It's like a different kind of avocado that they have here. Yeah. Or, there's tons of different kinds here. Tons. Yeah. Like in the supermarkets at home, we only get one kind, really. The Haas avocado. That's the one we get. We, yeah. don't, we don't have all these different yeah, those types. Those big ones. Those big. They're, yeah. And people don't really go for those With ones. With a though, smaller right? seed, you know, yeah, but the yeah. ones here have bigger seed, different yeah, taste. Yeah, people different go texture. for more like these shapes. You see these shape? Yeah. They'll, people love these type of ones, too, you know? And then you have the blacks. There are so many, brother. Uh -huh. There are so many of them. We're so really many. missing out on that. You know, at when, home we get like one or two type of banana, one type of avocado. We're really missing out yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. The they, they need, you know, because you, you know, are the smart one. Because when you want the variety, you know where to go. Yeah. You just fly to Jamaica and just <laughs> yeah, eat up the stuff, yeah. and then you go back up and know that's okay. That will last me for a year or so until I reach right. back to Jamaica. So you gotta introduce the rest of them now that they need to come to Jamaica and come in the seasoning when the thing is on that you can mm -hmm. just eat as many as you want. So some will remain in your system to hold it for the year when yeah. you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people need variety in their lives. You yeah. know this mono crop thing yeah. is shown to be. And then the one problematic that, if they're gonna send it they're not gonna send it if they're gonna import if, we, if they're gonna import these pear and thing, you'll never get the right one yeah because they're not gonna wait until it's fit because they know it's gonna get ripe too fast and then they're gonna lose so they're gonna pick the young ones and send them up to you and you're not gonna get when it, when it's ripe it's gonna be like you're not gonna get the right taste out of yeah. it because it, it wasn't fit it wasn't ready mm -hmm. pick it before it's ready got a nice banana here that's a jackfruit tree yeah. Oh, wow, I love jackfruit. Yeah, man. Tree right there, the yeah. biggest tree fruit in the world. Okay, I got to get a closer look here. Yeah. I know this from looking it up. Pumpkin is the biggest fruit in the world, but the biggest tree fruit is the jackfruit. jackfruit. The, the fruits kind of grow off the trunk, right? Because it's such a heavy... Yes, yes, the fruit bear on the trunk itself. You don't go on the branches. These trees, are, these fruits are like... Pew, is there a season for jackfruit then? Yes, the season would be like in the same summer too, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, jackfruit is on right now, and other times jackfruit will be coming into like further on in the, earlier in the year before now. Anytime from like mid June and them. Yeah. Summertime, most of the fruits come in in the summer though. 
most fruits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Comes in the summertime. Yeah. But so jackfruit is always around though, man. Jackfruit. Jackfruit come here. Jackfruit come in all type of season. Cause so ten mm -hmm. times if you come to Jamaica, you'll find someone have jackfruit. Same way. I love that one. Gets Check pretty sticky. Up, up, Leaf of life. Oh. That's what we call this in Jamaica. Leaf of life. Look it up on the internet. Yeah, it's good for arthritis, good for cough, cold. I mean, when we were kids, we just take it, bite up the leaves. <laughs> so we never have cold. We never have, we mm. just, yeah, because we always just eating these things. Just chew them up, suck the juice out of it, and spit out the trash. So we never have cold on these things when we were children, because we never know. But when I get big now, I realize this is the reason, one of the reasons why we never have those good type of things. Because we're just eating natural medicine every day, just by ourselves without yeah. even no one tell us, you know, we just see it and just like the flavor of it and know that it's not poison and chew it up. Very good. And it's good for arthritis too. What does it taste like? Bite it man. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> like a sourish taste. Ooh. <laughs> little bitter. Tastes healthy. A little sourish, a little Yeah, a little sour, sour, a little Yeah. Leaf of life. I hear ya. Right, so we're making the rounds and go right back around and end up back where we started. Oh right. man, yeah. what a beautiful place. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. Even more pear. It's pear, this place is blessed with pear. <laughs> this place should be called Pear Mountain. The pear grow. What happened? Why so much pears here right now? Because no pear was here when we came. We plant any pear that you see around here, we planted it. Uh, but we get to realize, out of all of the other things that we planted, the pear was the only one that went fast, like came, like, you know, we planted apple tree, planted breadfruit, we planted other things, but the pear was the one who moved like a bullet, it just, <laughs> yeah, so we decided, oh, this is a place that loves pear, so we just start planting pear all over, and you see, they're just coming up, popping up, popping up right now, everywhere. we have to be chopping down some pear trees now for, for, to get to some things, other things to grow. <laughs> Man, my friend Brad in Australia had a, a pear tree on his in-laws property, yeah. too much to eat so he used to box them up and yeah. he'd take them to the Mexican restaurant in town Yeah. and then they'd let him and a bunch of us friends all eat, drink for free, like eat like eat $500 and, yeah. worth of food and drink, just trade in yeah, your pear. Yeah, it was eat. so good man, it was the best trade. We have tried that before and I know that trading is the best. Because you actually, your money can't buy you what trade is going to give you. Mm -hmm. What trade would give you, your money would never buy. But because of trade, because you're giving by some pay, if you bought that box up here and told them to give you some money for it, they'd probably give you maybe $100. Yeah. But by trade, you could eat $500 yeah, worth yeah, of stuff crazy. because it's trade. You know, it's goods for goods. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's why trading, trading is important, brother. Putting down mojitos and coronas and tacos. And... Much love to Brad and Joni in Gold Coast. Love you guys. This is such a nice walk. Whoa, what happened to my flip flop here? Oh, I see, I see. Oh, what a sword. <laughs> yeah, I know. Excuse me while I light my spliff. Yeah, go for it. Excuse me while I light my spliff. Mm, I have to take a leaf, you know. More pear. Like you said, it's just going, going, going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. It's just everywhere. And these are just like randomly. This is not just, like, you know, just going on place. its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, you know, people just plant them all over the place. Buru, look at this. Yeah, man, we have it, man. Look at this mushroom. This uh, is a crazy one. Wild mushroom that, you know, that one they're supposed to. Poison, you know. Really? I don't know about that kind yeah. of here, but they, they usually get so, so scared of mushrooms, brother. Yeah. I've I've been growing up as you would tell us that the mushrooms that grow here are poisonous. We shouldn't just eat them. Yeah, no, you, you really got to know. I'm really curious because I have an app that tells you what yeah, they are. Yeah, man. Sure I want to so. see if it says. Yeah. Because I've been doing a lot of research on mushrooms. Yeah, um, snap tube. Not snap tube. Um, can we have that one for thing that we you know? The green farm thing that we just take a picture on. The, the, the recognize it uh -huh. and tell you what the plant That's is. Cool. You know what I mean to say? I might, have, be mistaken. Yeah, I might have to search it later because I don't have a good Wi-Fi right now, but 
I don't know, there must be a lot of really good mushrooms in Jamaica, but yeah. you gotta be real careful. Yeah, I really, yes, I really you want to know invest, what you're doing. I want to investigate and find out for me because for my youth, I don't look at these things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they grow up like out of some wooden, you find like some old wooden trees, tree trunk, and you see them growing up. But I'm always so scared of them, I don't even want to touch them yeah, because yeah. they always tell you they're poison. Better to know. <laughs> but sometimes it's not even so. True. But because maybe one of them poison and they don't know which one they just say almost shrooms. You got to pick the ones that are very easy to distinguish. I bought yeah. a couple books about it this year because we have a lot of good mushrooms in Canada, sure. in Ontario, and there's a lot of edible ones, but ah. there, and a lot of ones that are easy to tell actually. But. I'm so glad I see this tree for, for maybe not even for many reasons because this tree, when you look it up, you're going to see like a maybe a hundred and hard uses for this one tree, but I only want to give you one. That's what I use. That, that's what I use it for when I'm going to use it. Because you have other plants that do the some, some have the same medicinal products as this that does different things and still do the things that this do. But for this is the only plant that I know that can dry water from out of the system. If you have like a yeast infection, mm. you know yeast infection is very popular, especially amongst the females. This plant, just by boiling, I don't mean like eating it. I don't mean like eating it or making it into a flower or a dust, you know, to stop it, you know. I mean, you're gonna drink something that's gonna. So you, you look at the science of it. It's gonna be liquid, drying up liquid. Hmm. See it? Liquid. You're drinking liquid to dry up liquid. The name of it is sage. Ah. S A G E. Sage. And that's hmm. a red sage. So you have different sage, you have the purple sage also and everything, but this is a red sage. This, this will dry up your yeast infection, will take care of yeast infection. If a person has, one of my brother, he died now, who was living here, he got an accident one time that a fan blade broke off and went into his chest, almost the factory in his lung. Mm. When he went to the doctor, he was there for some time and the doctor said him, but every time they go, you have to be going back because you have some liquid gathering up around his lungs and all these areas, there are always some liquid gathering up and you have to go to the doctor and the doctor would can, uh, put it in tube and suck out the liquid. And I said, hey, you have to be going to the doctor to do that all the time. And I gave him the sage. The next time when he went, because you have to be going back like every two weeks or so to draw out the liquid. He drank the sage for that two weeks. Because it's a virgin, if you tell him about a medicine, he would just, he would just drink it like morning, noon and night. That's <laughs> how he works. So he was drinking it hard. Yeah. When he went back to the doctor and the doctor was looking, they couldn't find no liquid to pull and they were asking, where was the liquid? <laughs> and he told them about it, said, this is what took away the liquid, brethren, the sage. So internally, it works. Any liquid that's not supposed to be somewhere and you know that it's there and you need to get rid of it, just drink up this sage and it's going to be liquid, drying up liquid. Science. Mm -hmm. We're making our way down now. Yeah. Because just by walking around, I had at least a few things in my mind that I know that we have up here because remember, this medicinal ex, this is just like an excerpt, is excerpt they will call it, <laughs> mm -hmm. from the great medicines that are in Jamaica. This is just one small little place that we live. I don't, we don't go into any bushes or anything. If we went into the bushes, a whole lot of ton of other medicines there to show and the reason for them, especially the ones that's good for the man. Ah, uh, power, yeah, up yeah. here and down there, <laughs> yeah? Men that have up, uh, trouble with, with, with uh, impotence and all these things, medicines right here in the mountain too. And then there are many medicines that are in Jamaica that are not up here. So when we're gonna make medicine, we just don't, I just don't search the mountain. If I'm gonna make a medicine for someone, probably take me to Clarendon, probably take me to Westmoreland mm -hmm. because there are medicines there that don't grow in other place. You have certain parishes that you only can find certain medicines there, you're not going to find it because some medicines grow in the hot place and won't grow in the cold place. You have some grow in the cold place and won't grow in the hot place. So parishes have different medicines. So we go to different, different medi parishes when I'm going to create a medicine for something specific. Sometimes I have to go to a different parish to get another medicine. So this is just the medicine of this is just community, a little community walk. Just off the path, which just is the craziest the path, part too. Off the path. Off the path. We haven't you gone see, off track at all. No, just walking yeah. on the road. This is just road medicine yeah. we're teaching right now. Yeah. Medicine that is on the roadway. That you can see every day. 
So we are right at the two roads right now. Yeah. We started down there and we came up here and we took the fork to the left and we went all the way up and came back around on this road. On this track. So now we are almost back where we started this journey. But we are standing under a mango tree. It's a big mango tree here. Yeah. So I have to tell you at the same time, the mango leaves, good for asthma. So any person that has asthma, mango leaves are very good for that asthma. All you got to do, boil them, steam it, or, or just put some hot water in it and let it pull out the medicine out of it. And when it gets cool enough for you to drink, you just drink it. Very good for asthma. Mm. Yeah. All right, bro. Thanks, that was incredibly educational and fantastic walk. So I'll put all your links below. Definitely check out Brew if you want a guide or need an herb tour or Blue Mountain tour or you want to make some music, yeah, check yeah. out the men. Anything you want. If you want a Jamaica tour of the world, Jamaica, if you want a dance tour, if you want a herb tour, you want a music tour, you want to come down, we'll go to the studio to make some music together, you want some dub plate, you want some <laughs> anything at all that you want, I'm the link. That's the far right. Link up, That's Judge Every Music on Instagram, YouTube, Judge Every Music. You can find me there also. Yeah, and from there we can. I'm on Facebook too, so you'll see my information there, Larry Stanable. So, any two of those links, we can link up and then we can go further with the links. You know how it goes. Bless. Mm -hmm. That's the far right. That's up.